Welcome to a lesson with Dr. Powell. Let's talk about the idea of centroid or center of mass. Center of mass can be thought roughly or intuitively as if you have an object and we're gonna just be taking flat objects. Where do you need to put your finger so it'll perfectly balance the object? So that it be the set, so we'll have mass equally distributed around it, um, kind of thinking about the shape of the object. So center of mass. A centroid is the same idea as a center of mass, except it assumes that the mass is evenly distributed per square, um, uh, per unit area or volume or whatever we are dealing with. So this means mass is uh, evenly distributed throughout the region. So the only re real thing that um, that is of importance is the geometric shape because more shape means more mass and less, sh uh, less shape means less mass. And so basically just geometrically, we're kind of looking at for a geometric center and that's what centroid is. So centroid is kind of a ge geometric idea because we're kind of ignoring mass because we're assuming that it's evenly distributed per geometric unit of, of area. So that really the only thing that contributes is the actual geometry of the shape itself. Okay, <clears throat> so that's what we're gonna be looking at. Now let's look at a specific example. And as we look at this example, we'll build the ideas necessary in order to be able to compute it. So here, let's take a shape right here. Assume this is the y-axis and this is the x-axis. And we have part of a curve here. And um, we wanna figure out what x bar, y bar is. Now, x bar, y bar, those are just the notation for the coordinates of this centroid that we're looking for. So we're gonna be focusing on the centroid just for now assuming that mass is evenly distributed per area, unit area. So let's think about what this means. First of all, X and Y themselves are actually functions of, I'll call it M for a mass variable. Now, what is M? So we could think of it this way. M is the amount of is the amount as a measurement of mass from this starting point. So maybe to write here, maybe that's M, the amount of mass up until this point within the shape itself. Now, given a certain amount of mass, doesn't that give us an x coordinate out? So input mass, output an x coordinate. Hey, that makes x a function of M. Um, <clears throat> right here. Also, we'll think of a y, this y value, and we'll call it y average, if you will. And y average can be, uh, of m can be thought of as the middle y value at this particular amount of mass that we've taken up to this point. So kind of like the middle y value, y average will be like the middle y value here. Uh, to that point. So the middle y value, um, and maybe we can even call it something so we don't confuse it. Maybe we just call it y um, middle, yeah, mid, y mid if you want. So y mid, all right, is a function of m. So again, y mid is the y coordinate right in the middle of this line where m come is uh, the amount of mass up to a particular line. So mass up to a particular line determines an x-coordinate, and it also determines a y-mid-coordinate because it determined an x-coordinate, so it determined the line, so it would determine this. Okay, so we have, just intuitively, x is a function of m. y-mid is a function of m. Now what we're interested in to know is what the average value of this function of m is and what the val average value of this function of m is. And that's what x bar and y bar are going to be. Let's draw a little picture here. Let's come up with an m axis. So the more mass we go, it'll affect 
where this line is going to be. So for instance, as the, uh, so as M increases, what happens? This line is pushed this way, right? So more M, we push the line that way. So if you, you want to think about it, you could turn this on its side, if you will, and think about M as being the amount of liquid you're putting into this. Well, that this is two dimensional, but you can kind of think of it that way. M is the amount of liquid, so it lays flat right here. And the amount of liquid or the volume of liquid is increasing and goes here. So we have more M, more M, more M. And um, as we get more volume, then the height, or which is now the X value because we're turned, the X value is going to be specific, is going to depend upon how much volume you would have. And so we do have that X really is a function of M. And so let's think about this. When we're first, when we're at the beginning, M is zero and uh, X is zero in this case as well. And then notice that the X, that as, um, then as M increases, um, the uh, X coordinate will also be increasing. Um, so is, uh, right, so as M increases, the X coordinate is increasing. Now notice here at the end, what's happening. So M is not increasing as much and X is increasing more per smaller bit of mass. And so you'll, you'll actually see kind of, as we go along, you'll actually see that the X values actually increase faster uh, per the M because there's less M per more X here as we move along. So maybe something roughly kind of like this as we go would be the graph of the X coordinate X of M um, as we go along. Um, okay, so something like, okay, but maybe it might actually look a little bit more like, um, it might be more like that maybe, I don't know, something like that maybe. Um, and then we need to figure out what the average value of this function is What's the height here? So the height or whatever that would be, that would give us, um, that's what X bar is going to refer to. So quite literally, X bar is going to be the average value with respect to M of this X function, all right? So we need the interval. What does M go from? M goes from zero to a total amount of mass, which we'll call capital M zero to M. So the interval will be total mass minus zero. And then we're going to be integrating the function X of M DM. So this is the calculation. It's just simply the average value of the X function with respect to M on this mass interval from the total. So M is going from zero to the total amount of mass that we actually see in the shape. Okay. So how do we compute this? Um, so, well, first of all, what is this and what exactly is M? Well, for our sake, mass is going to, at least when we're thinking about centroids, mass is actually the same thing. In this case for centroids, the same thing as area. They're the same. So when we're talking about M here, we can actually think about area. So what does the area go from? Well, it goes from an area of zero to a total area. Well, the whole area under this shape. Okay, so we gotta get the whole area into the shape. So really, we can rewrite this as total area. Total area of the shape. Okay, so we gotta compute that. Now here, this is an integral with respect to M. It'd be nice to actually rewrite this as an integral with respect to something else like X. So we gotta do a change of variable. Um, now in the change of variable, uh, actually with this, this actually intersects when X is two. You can check, um, you can check that. Um, when X is two, this is gonna be one minus one, which would be zero, so Y value is zero. So zero to two in the X. So we wanna change this integral. So it looks, has a D, so a change of variable. So we have a DX here. And so we're going from an X coordinate of zero to an X coordinate of two. Now, what is this? Uh, what goes here. Um, so 
in order to make this translation, we got to replace, we got to figure out what to replace dm with and what to replace x of m with, okay? Well, if we're, if we're going, if we're changing variables, so this is going to be in terms of dx, x is just itself x. So we're actually done here. This is just simply x. But what we got to be concerned about is this dm. Hmm. What is dm? Because that's what we're going to put in right here. And we need to write dm in terms of dx. This is easy, easily done if we look at this picture here and think about what's happening. What does dm refer to? dm refers to a little change of area. Okay, so we can draw a little rectangle to represent a little cha additional change of area as we go this way and call that dm. That's your little change of area. Then what is this, well, this is a little change of area for a little change of x. That's your dx. Hmm, so dm is actually the whole area of this rectangle. dx is just this little width of the rectangle. Now, what's the height of this rectangle? The height of this rectangle is exactly the height here in this shape at position x. So what is the height of the shape at position x? Well, we have a function right here, right? That's our function. So our function would be, that's our y value from zero up to that point, because this is a y value of zero up to that y value. So this would be, this is the height right there of that rectangle, one minus x over two quantity squared. But then, so we kept the height. So what is, but to get dm, we need the height times dx, right? I mean, height times width. So we need to multiply that dx in there. So we multiply dx in and what we get is we get dm. So this whole part right here is dm. So really the main thing that we had to do here was we just let x alone. X is just itself. In fact, it's e easier to think about it this way anyhow. I mean, x had been written as a function of m, but we didn't even know what it was, but it didn't matter because in the substitution back, it's just itself x. So the only thing we need to concern ourselves is what this dm is. And this dm just happens to be the height times dx, just the change of area. So m is just the area, right? So this is like the dA or the dm. And what is that? That's just the, that's just the rectangle area right there. So height times width. And this is your rectangle. Then this is your integral. This is the integral that you would compute right here. And we even have the bounds. We changed the bounds. So it would be in terms of x, zero to two, and we're just integrating this. This integral right here can be done with the use of the tuition. Now, we also remember we have to say one over total area. Remember the total area, what it was? It was the length of this mass or area um, interval that we were working with in this with this variable going from zero up to the total amount of area. So um, we need to be able to compute what the total area is. So after we do this, we also need to be able to compute the area and then divide by it. The next video will work through the details of this computation. Thanks for watching.